All right, so let's try to figure out the, the, uh, the proof of this fact. Uh, before we, we move on, uh, we, before you, we show you how to prove this, uh, let's think a little bit about uh, the pigeonhole proof. Uh, if you go back and look at the Sox case, to use the pigeonhole principle, you have to figure out what should be the pigeons and what should be their holes. So uh, in this case, uh, what are the pigeons and what are the holes? Okay. So basically, uh, you have n socks, n pair of socks, right? And then you have uh, so these are the the pairs, okay? So these are this would be the holes, the pigeon holes. So you have n of them, okay? And then you put uh, you pick n plus one socks, right? So at least one sock must go to the same holes. And that's that's uh, that's the uh, that that's where you get the same uh, pair. Okay, so this is like the sock number up to the uh, the pair number n to n, right? Okay, so in this case, uh, if if you look at the case, uh, the height of the people, what should be the holes, the boxes, and what should be the objects? If you look at the number, the number is sort of you know, guys use a little bit here, right? So we we have uh, two two hundred fifty one people, so we can think of them as objects, and and these will be the boxes. So we basically do the following. So this is the um, the height. So we start with zero and we end it with uh, two hundred fifty centimeters, and we divide this into uh, as uh, boxes. Each of with uh, each represent the height from uh, zero to one centimeters, one to two, and so on. Although nobody's uh, height is like like less than uh, one centimeters, just just do it f for 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 now. So um, so this is the box number one. This is the box number two, and so on. So this is the box number two hundred fifty, right? Now, from the pigeonhole principles, now we have 250 boxes and we have uh, 251 objects. Then at least two must fall in the same box. So suppose they fall into the ith box here. So two people fall into this, the ith box. But we know that the ith box, uh, the, the height of the people who fall into the ith box is between uh, uh, i plus one centimeters to i, so you need to deal with the uh, the boundary a little bit. So you can say uh, the boundary. Uh, um, so the low the the lower end is uh, is for the, the the previous box. Okay, so if they fall into the same ith box, they have the height will be uh, greater than i minus one and no no larger than i. So if you subtract, then you know that the heights of these two people will differ by at most one centimeters. So that's how to use the uh, pigeonhole principle to, to prove this. Okay. All right. So uh, let's look at another situation. Okay. Um, now we look at the birth birthday problem. Okay. So it's quite often that you find people with the same birthday. Okay. Um, if you use the pigeonhole principles, uh, uh, we know that. There is I, there is at most uh, 366 days in a year. So the pigeonhole principle states that if you have 367 people in a room, then there is at least one pair with the same birthday. Okay. However, it is it is more common than that. Okay. If you have a, a room with maybe uh, 50 people, then you you will find people with the same birthday. So um, that's that's because the pigeonhole look at the worst case scenario. Right. So um, maybe we can say something about it uh, in in wi with probabilities. Okay. So um, so so we think about the probability that there are two students with the same birthday in a room with forty students. Okay. So do you think uh, this is large enough? Because in the worst case, you require uh, three hundred sixty-seven people because they they have one uh, different they can born on different day unless uh, there are this much right but on average is 40 students uh, enough like like give you their uh, um, you know 
large enough probably that you, you find someone with the same birthday okay so so we will analyze it in in the we'll try to uh analyze the probability in the next uh clip okay so so i'll see you